this is a teaching that we did a little while ago, and we were talking about Passover, and we were talking about the matzah, and we were talking about, about ultra-Orthodox people, how every Passover they'll take the, the matzah, they take it out of the matzah tashin, out of the, out of the middle part, take it out and they break it. And I've sat at the table with the ultra-Orthodox up, at, uh, up in Atlanta. They invited me, so I came. I don't know why they invited me. Maybe they felt like having the spirit of Elohim resonant this year. <laughs> you spend so much time denying that Yeshua is the son of the living Yah, you finally got to a point where you say, you know what, we need to act, we need to spice this thing up. Well, one of the things that I have found out in ultra-Orthodox tradition is that they take out that middle piece of matzah and they break it. They say the blessing, Baruch kata, the hamotzi, as it's commonly called. They break it. And I asked them, why do you do it? Show me in the Torah where it says for you to take that out of the middle piece, break it, wrap it in a shroud, and then hide it away and call it afikomen. And what does afikomen mean? Does it mean dessert? Well, it's a Greek word, but what does it mean? We're looking forward to something. That's what it means. We're looking forward to some. In fact, the, even when you call it the unleavened bread, the matzah, there's a hidden message in the matzah. Not only about the one we're looking forward to, but when we find that piece of that hidden afikomen, and you know why the reason why they call it afikomen, a Greek word, is because they're trying to hide the true meaning. That back somewhere in the day, they took this tradition and realized that they themselves were at fault. And rather than change what they do, they just hid it. So they wrap it in the napkin, they hid it away. But I want, let me say something to you. Every year the ultra-Orthodox will grab that matzah and they'll break it and they wrap it and they hide it away. But when they need something from the Lord... They go to that piece that they wrapped up and hid. And a lot of times they'll hide it in the dresser drawer. That part, that, you know, you never know what happens to that part. It gets hidden away in the dresser drawer. And when they have a financial problem or they have an illness, they run to that piece of matzah. Wow. And they go and they break off a small piece of that matzah. Now, see, I'm giving up the ultra-Orthodox here. <laughs> and they lift it up in the name of whom this represents. You know, in recent years, more and more people have talked about how many hidden believers there are in the ultra-Orthodox, yet they won't come out. Why don't they come out? Thank you. Exactly. That's exactly. Same thing that Yeshua said. You'll be flogged, you'll be beaten, your finances will be cut off, any, anything that your children might have, you'll be kicked out of Israel. There's a big one. You won't be going to the yeshiva anymore, the school, the Hebrew school and be somebody, walk in there, you'll be respected, anybody, you'll come over, and say, oh, Rabbi so-and-so. I get there, and they look at me and go, oh, him again. <laughs> Where did his mother go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Whose sin was it, his father or his mother? <laughs> I've actually heard that. Oh. Uh, and a few other colorful metaphors. Yeah, yeah. And then he op his eyes opened. But, to, but to, uh, to give you an idea, do you know that the Lord has always reserved somebody for himself? Amen. Do you know that? Amen. Brother, you surely know that. You know, you, as you're going through life, you realize you're, you're just different than everybody else around you. You can't help it. Yeah. I used to go home and complain to my grandfather. I said, why don't we just join the other Jewish kids in synagogue? He looked at me and goes, one day you'll know. So I went to my father. I said, Dad, why don't we join the other kids in the synagogue? One day you'll know. <laughs> Thank you. So what did I do? I ran to the synagogue when I didn't tell them. I went to the synagogue and I sat with the other kids. And they're all looking at me like, oh, okay, you know. My name, well, my last name is Man, so it just fit right in, not a problem. It's a nice Jewish name. And they asked me where I'm from. Oh, I'm uh, a cousin of so-and-so. Don't tell you where he's from. 
I would sit there and I would listen to what they had to say. And they talked about the Hebrew. And every time they talked about the Hebrew, something on the inside of me said, you know, that is, that is so profound, that's so encouraging. But everything my grandfather taught me would come back. Because yes, it starts here, but it doesn't stop there. It goes on. And that's what they did at the Passover. They took it, they broke it, they hid it away. But the meaning was hid away too. They didn't share that. And the four questions, they didn't share that. Why is this night different? Because our Messiah went to the cross for us. Amen. That's why this night is different. <clears throat> why, did this not, why did this night do we recline? Because now we're free men. We're no longer slaves. What happened to that part? Why is this night different? You know there's power in Passover? Now I'm going to talk about Passover here just for a second, then we're going to have some real teaching. I just want to mention Passover. I, I, I mentioned Passover in passing. That's a little joke my grandfather used to say. <laughs> but the end result is, how much power is there in Passover? But the real power is not some outward event. The real power is in you. Amen. The real power is in your faith. If you knew how effective your prayers are right now, in this season, in this Moadim, you'd pray 24-7. You'd pray coming in and going out. You wouldn't go to sleep. But wait a minute, I've got to get this prayer out first. Yeah. There's somebody I remember from my childhood, and I, he was my best friend. I haven't seen him since. I'm going to pray for him today. You have no idea of the effectiveness of your prayers. You know, Yaakov or James, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman. I want you to know that your prayers are backed up by God. You can say it, and you may get it wrong. It may not be perfect, but God puts a stamp of approval on it. That's all you need. That's right, you and he are a majority. But when two or more of you get together in his name to carry out something that he has commanded thousands of years ago, the prophetic value of you just showing up at this time and season? Amen, Anybody here Jewish? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you weren't when you walked in, you are now. Yeah. There, there it is. Who's the true Jew? Exactly. Circumcision of the heart, the circumcision that Yeshua commanded. This is what we have to have in order to do. If we're going to fulfill his mitzvot, his commands, we have to have this circumcision of the heart and a release of his power through us. How come we're not walking around like the apostles? Yeah, how come? Do we? Sure we do. It's very small. But we have that measure of faith. It, to each one of us has been given the measure of faith. But how do we grow it? That's the problem. We got it. We just don't know how to grow it. How do you cultivate it? What kind of, what kind of ground should I plant this thing in? What do I do to make the, that little mustard seed grow inside of me so that it comes out of me in such a prophetic way? The Lord speaks to me, and I know he's speaking to my brother, and he tells me to go over and pray for somebody. Man, you better go over there and get it done. If they're missing a blessing because of your rebellion, let me just back away just for a second so the Lord can do it to him. Because, you know, the Lord will judge his people. That's right. Judgment starts in the house. That's right. He's going to deal with his own children first. So if he gets you right and he's got you where he wants you, only then will he go out and deal with the world. See, that's the problem we see now. Is we're, we're so look, we're busy looking at the world. Let's look at us first. A little introspection, not a whole big thing. Let's get ourselves to a point where, okay, Lord, you've asked me to do this. I'm in the house. He's pulling the house together. He's pulling people out of all different types of backgrounds. We don't, we, we, you know, none of us really know what background we're from. I mean, this is America. We're all mixed together. Amen. But let's stop looking back for a second to look forward to who we are now. Abraham Hallelujah. was not a Jew when he started. But every Jewish person calls him my father. That's right. Because he's a father of the faithful. If 
you're a faithful person in Messiah Yeshua and your heart has been circumcised, you've been grafted in to the commonwealth of Israel, you don't get any more Jewish than that, folks. There's nobody who's been born in Jerusalem more Jewish than that. Only other ultra-orthodox will just say, well, he was born in Jerusalem. He's somebody. You were born in Messiah, the new Jerusalem. Believe me, you're somebody. Yeah. Know, who, know, know about your citizenship. Know about your rights in Messiah. Use those rights. Put the devil in his place. Pray consistently in season and out of season. Be ready to lay hands on people. Get their permission first. We talked about that a little earlier. Told to go pray for a child. Well, go to his father first. Say, sir, can I pray for your child? The Lord just spoke to me about your child has an issue. We need to pray for it. You don't know what argument happened that morning between the husband and the wife. The wife is going, you know, I got to bring the baby to church to get him prayed for so that, you know, the Lord can deal with the issue. We don't have the money for this issue. It happens all the time. People have problems in their finances. Husband says, no, I don't believe that. Then some guy comes right out of the blue, walks up to the husband and goes, sir, the Lord spoke to me about your child and I need to pray for him with your permission. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of an impact do you think that's going to have on him? You have to witness right there. Because he's suddenly thinking every curse word he ever said got heard. He's going, mm. <laughs> I didn't know. You know now. Yes. And that's the kind of thing you have to be ready for. You have to be ready in that season, in that instant. But you have to be smart. Sometimes we're so religiously oriented. We can use that politically correct. That we don't think about just being in the real world. Lord speaks to you about going laying hands on somebody. You may not be a good thing for you just to rush over there, lay hands on them, let the Lord come.